Hello, and a very pleasant good afternoon to all of ye, uh, dear sisters and brothers, saints of the Church of the Living God, and unto all of you others out there, hello, hi. I had Bluck. It kind of missed the meaning of the previous video, you twit. But of course, of course, uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord, neither can he, because he is spiritually discerned. So, anyway, anyway, it is common knowledge to even the devils that God purports to be a God of truth, that God purports to not lie, okay? And we don't really need to go through the scriptures. We're going to go through some scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me at the things that we will be looking at today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be reading. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because the mouth will go quicker than the brain, okay? But it is, it's, it is a common thing to be noted that God purports to be a God of truth, and he is. God cannot lie, God does not lie, okay? And God has a very low, low opinion of those who do lie, okay? He really does. That doesn't mean that a liar can't be saved, but someone like the sleazy believist, the Calvinist, the Catholic, uh, some of the Baptist persuasion, and whoever who are lying and presenting to you another Jesus, another gospel, those, those guys are in a lot of trouble with the Lord. Okay? All right? Even devils and whatnot, even though they will try, it is a common thing that God purports to be a God of truth. One of the things that you atheists do and I saw this recently with a um, hermetic individual who <laughs> calls himself a satanic atheist. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. So a satanic atheist, kind of like a Christian atheist, whatever. But um, one of the things that atheists will do, they will go into like, they'll get a Bible like an NIV or ESV. Okay, you got to remember, me, personally, I'm all about distinction. Okay, I don't call the authorized version a Bible. Okay, you can make all your arguments you want. Okay, I'm all about distinction. Okay, I am all about distinction. I call this the scripture. Okay, itself. The scripture itself refers to it as the scripture or the word of God. Okay. All right, but what will happen is an atheist will use a Bible to attack what God said. For example, the Hermetic individual who I am referring to, in order to disprove or to make God look bad, the guy reads out of, um, uh, uh, what is that, uh, the Jehos version of the Bible, um, the New World Translation. He uses a New World Translation. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> that's see that's the thing okay one of these Christians will come up to an atheist and they say well God doesn't lie the Christian will say to an atheist and then the atheist will be like but wait a minute they'll get a Bible and they'll be like yeah God does lie you know and they will go in a Bible for example in the NIV um, Jesus says um, in the NIV, it's like anybody who is angry with his brother is in danger of the judgment. In the scriptures, it says, he who is angry at his brother without a cause will be in danger of the judgment. Okay? So the NIV turns God into a liar. The ESV turns God into a liar. Okay? The New American Standard turns God into a liar. You get the point. The authorized version of the scriptures does not do that because this is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Okay? Right here. The authorized version. This is it. So an atheist, and I've seen this. I've seen this. An atheist will go to attack God, and so do the Muslims. So do the Muslims. 
Okay? The Muslims will take a Bible. Okay, remember, I'm, I'm distinction. I, I know it says, I know it says that on this, but in here, it doesn't. Okay? And what's in here is what's important. Okay? But a Muslim, a son of Ishmael, will go and take a Bible and try and go up to a Christian and make the Christian look stupid because the Bibles make God into a liar. You atheists, you're right. You're right. The Bibles make God into a liar. You're right. You are absolutely right. Yeah, I know it says that. But see, within the pages of it, it doesn't. This is the authorized version. This is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Okay? This is God's word. This is perfect. Okay? This is our standard. This is the standard of the saint, the authorized version. Okay? There is no lie in the authorized version of the scripture. Okay? There might be things that you think contradict, but see, you have to study to show yourself approved unto God. Then again, also, too, you've got to remember that the scriptures, a lost person can understand some of the scriptures. Absolutely, like in Romans 1, 2, and 3. Okay? But the deeper things of scripture, you need the Lord. Okay? Or else this is just a book to you. Okay? Hence the problem with the atheist. Especially with the atheist who will go to a Bible to try to disprove anything of God. And it's like, dude, yeah. Yeah, the Bibles call God a liar. They do. They do. Okay, like I said, that one dear hermetic individual who wears my haircut, um, he, he's, he texts God all the time. And the guy, and, uh, you know, he'll quote, quote a Bible. The guy's using the new uh, world translation, the J-Ho thing. It's like, dude, it's <laughs> dude. Okay, come on. Or I've seen atheists use the message to try to... Yeah, I'm the one guy that used the message. He, he was an atheist. And he was, he was brutal. But what was his foundation? It was sand. The message. I don't know if you've ever read out of the message. I have. Okay. It's, it's, it's atrocious. It's atro You know a Bible is bad when you got an idiot like John MacArthur, who is not stupid, uh, says that it's bad. Okay, you know it's bad when John MacArthur even himself has to say it's bad, and he's his own standard. Okay? All right? You know it's bad when Jesuit James White, okay, who's looking more and more like Ignatius with every time I see him. Uh, he, you know, the uh, Bible is bad when even he says something about it. Okay? That, that's pretty bad. Okay? But God does not lie. God does not lie. And one of the questions that a dear, dear young brother brought up to me recently, and this, this question has been answered within him, myself and himself. I want to bring it up to you today. The question was, I'm out witnessing. And someone asks me, what are you doing? Uh, but if I tell them the truth, it might be a detriment unto me. So what do I do? Do I lie about it and say, ah, oh, don't lie, I wasn't doing anything, or what do I do? It's like, well, what is this? And this we're not going to look at. Okay, we're not going to look at this. What, because even devils will know uh, this one. It's like, well, what, is, what does the scripture say? You know, he who is ashamed of me and my words, I will also be ashamed of him. That's bread icing it. Okay? Paul is like, don't, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? So, this thing about, okay, what have you been doing as far as you being a, an ambassador for Christ, even if it's a detri detriment to yourself? Of course, you're like, I've been witnessing. What, what, what are you doing? Okay? All right? But our brother, our dear brother, brought up a really good point. Really good point. He brought up certain things in the book of Exodus and Joshua, which we are going to hit at the end of this video. But just just for the for the sake of this, turn in your authorized versions of the scripture to Proverbs 12, 
verses 17 and verse 22, we're going to have some light expository here. Light, okay? We don't really need to establish unto you that God purports to not lie at all, okay? But we're going to touch on this, okay? We're not going to touch on the thing about, you know, not being ashamed or anything like that. If you have questions about that, check out the three parts of witnessing, okay? All right? All right, we, yeah, that, of course, okay, if, you know, he was ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of him. That's Bradizing it, okay, and that's, you know, don't be ashamed of me, the prisoner of the Lord, you know, because we know, you know, we're not to be ashamed as witnesses. And even if it's like, even if it'll cost you your job, even if it'll cost you your house, your family, okay, in standing up and defending the gospel for preaching the word of God on the people. No. You, you never shriek from that. Never. Never. Okay, that, that's bad. You don't do that. But let's, let's establish this thing about, because like I said, the atheist, okay, and there is no such thing as an atheist. You are your own God. You believe in a deity. The deity is you. So shut up about that. But the atheist who has some semblance will take, like I said, a Bible. And the Bibles declare God to be a liar. Absolutely they do. But not the scriptures. Proverbs 12, verses 17 on to verse 22. He that seeketh truth sheweth forth righteousness. But a false witness, a false witness to see. John 14, 7 and 6. Okay? John 14, 7 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the, T-H-E, definitive article before whatever. Jesus says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, that is the one of the most exclusive statements in the history of mankind. Right there. In that verse, Jesus Christ excludes everything else but himself. Okay? Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Catholicism, Calvinism, Sleazy Believism, and the list goes on. Jehoism, Moranism, Mormonism. Okay, and virtually every ism known to man. Ism, I is man. Okay, that's an exclusive statement. See, our God is a God of exclusivity. Okay, all right. If, if, and, and you know what you do when you know, get your little pen, circle that if. Okay. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Jesus Christ is God the Father. The Trinity that you hear of so much that you atheists and even Muslims uh, debunk and good for them, uh, that's a lie. That's a lie. You Trinitarians are liars. Okay, you Trinitarians are liars. You might be a little ignorant because of the uh, wearing away of the stones of the Roman Catholic Church, Satan's Church, but uh, you're a Trinitarian, you're agreeing with Rome. Okay, you're agreeing with Rome. All right? God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in his image. We are spirit, soul, and body as well. Okay, that's how that works. All right? So Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. 
He that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. And of course, John 8, John 8, 30 on to verse 32. As he spake these words, many believed on him. And we've covered this part of it uh, in Scripture quite extensively. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Ye if, there's another one of them ifs. Okay, and this is, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we expound on this in just a FI video. Okay. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? What is the truth? Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? And let's look at verse 36. Okay? If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And then some of you will, how does the Son thing work out? Uh, also another video in the description box. Um, I'm talking about uh, Jesus didn't know the day or the hour, refuting some old senile fart. Okay, that will be in the description box as well. Jesus Christ, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He is the embodiment of truth, okay? He is the embodiment of truth, all right? He is the truth. He is the truth, okay? Go to Numbers chapter 23, one verse. Numbers 23, one verse. This is, like I said, this is light. This is light, okay? Numbers 23... We want verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man, comma, even though Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, yes, yes, okay? But remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, he did something that no man could ever do. He kept the law perfectly. He never sinned. He can't sin because God can't sin. And lying is a sin. Okay? God is not a man that he should lie. So is right, right, don't look at me. Look at that verse. Okay? Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. He has said, and shall he not do it? He has spoken, and shall he not make it good? God is not a man that he should lie. God doesn't lie. Uh, but some of you are probably thinking of, well, what about in Hebrews? We're going there. Hebrews 6, verse 18, one verse. Hebrews 6, 18. Uh, let's read verses um, 17 and 18. Uh, actually, there's a semicolon there. So let's read from verses 17 on to verse 20. On to verse 20. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. God is truth. It is impossible for God to lie. Okay? See, but see, like I said, the atheist We'll get a Bible, which comes from Rome, okay, which turns God into a liar. And in that respect, their foundation, their source that they're working off of, you're right. But see, this is the perfect inerrant given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version, okay? Now, if you're going to try through the scriptures commonly referred to as the King James Version to prove God a liar. Then that's a different story. And you're going to have a hard time to do that. Okay? You're going to have a real hard time to do that. Alright? Alright? So let's continue. Verse 18. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, 
we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us and our hope is Jesus Christ which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which entereth into, into that within the veil whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek okay now go back to uh, Proverbs 12 verse 18 there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword but the tongue of the wise is health and Paul in the book of Ephesians refers to the scripture as the sword of the spirit which is the word of God okay you can find that on your own time this is light okay this is light there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise, wise equated with wisdom, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is health. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Not 18. Lord, did you overshoot that? Psalm 55. We want verses 19 on to verse 23. God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes, therefore they, lost people, fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than oil. Okay? But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. This is talking about someone who deceives and lies to you. Uh, the sleazy believers, heretics, Catholics, Mormons, Jehos, whatever. Uh, that idiot from England, that scum, okay, whatever. This encompasses a, a broad uh, scope, okay. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Flattery. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. But war is in his heart. He hates you. War, they're at war with God. Okay? His words were softer than oil. You know? Came and kissed you and found you and hugged you. It's like, this day I have peace offerings with me. This day have I per, uh, performed my vows. Okay? Alright? Yet were they drawn swords. Meant to slay you and to get you out of the way. Okay? Remedy. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And who today declares righteousness? You? Well, if you save yourself, of course, then you are, you know, you declare your own righteousness. Or you've got to keep the commandments, right? Right? Or you've done that, which is... And concurrent with uh, keeping the commandments, you know. Oh, I went to uh, I went to mass today. I, I ate the wafer cookie and drank the plan and stuff like that. Hmm. Right. But thou, O oh God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody, look at that, and deceitful, lying men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. Okay, and look across the page here, go, um, or excuse me, Proverbs 15, verses 1 on to verse 4. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out, poureth out foolishness. A wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. We who are wise, meaning that we have the fear of the Lord, we use our words sparingly. Okay, we, we ought to. Okay, we ought to. As you've seen, as and the Lord has rebuked me many times, I sometimes will start, I will get my get myself a little irritated. You know, my fault. Okay? But we're supposed to use the tongue of knowledge aright. 
Okay, a right. And if we are doing that, how are we using the tongue of knowledge a right? By speaking the scriptures, by pointing everyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. And not to I, 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 me, me, me. Okay? And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Okay? The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Okay? Proverbs 12 now, verse 19. The lip of truth shall be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. And the lip of truth. Our Lord says what? Sanctify them through thy truth. This is John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's like, okay, Brad, well, that's that's the written word, but how is that the lip of truth? Oh, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses uh, 16 on to verse 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You follow that along. You look up the word on your own time. Inspiration. It means, literally, in Scripture, it means God breathed. And if you're breathing, yeah, you can breathe out your nose, but God breathed. Okay? God breathed. Alright? The lip of truth shall be established forever. God spoke. Okay? You look in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. You see the Godhead in action. And verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Word made flesh. Okay? Alright? That's our Lord Jesus Christ. So it says here, the lip of truth shall be established forever. We, the saints, we have the lip of truth because we have the word of truth and we have the truth living within us. So when we speak the word onto other people, we have the lip of truth, okay? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, okay? That the man of God may be perfectly, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Alright. Now, Proverbs 12, verse 20. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But to the counselors of peace, is joy. Oh, and a whole lot of people are saying peace, peace, but there is no peace. Like it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, while they promise them peace, and then sudden destruction cometh upon them. No, there's no peace to the wicked. You know, blessed are those who publish the uh, gospel of peace, okay? Peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord through the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? But, Focus here on imagine evil. They come up with things, just willy-nilly. This is something that happens quite a bit uh, uh, when I'm attacked and also with other brethren who are attacked by these ridiculous devils. They make stuff up, okay? But Romans chapter 1, 28 on to verse 32. Romans 1, 28 on to verse 32. You atheists, you devils. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Gave you over. You want to believe a lie? We're going to address this. Go ahead. See, people will point, try to point out, well, God makes people to believe a lie. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. God deceives people. No, he does not. More on that in a minute. Okay? But, okay, let's read that again. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over 
to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You want to believe like that one hermetic individual? Well, I, and I told him in a comment, I, I went there, I wasn't causing no problems, uh, preaching to a guy like that, witnessing to him is a waste of time. He's heard the truth, and he's actively fighting against it. Okay? He's an enemy. He's my enemy. Okay? But, but the same thing, okay? If the Lord were to appear to a guy like that, he wouldn't believe it anyway. Just like on the cross, when they said, Lord, come down from the cross, the Lord been like, okay, here I am. They would have stoned him to death. Okay? They would have. They were not going to believe the truth. And if that's what you want, our God's a loving, giving God, right? You want to believe a lie? He'll give it to you. We'll, we'll touch more on that as we continue. Okay? Let's continue here. Being filled with all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. You want to believe a lie? God will give you that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, want, I want you to come to me. you got to come to me broken, contrite, and fear of me. Call upon my name and I'll save you. But if you don't want to do that, you want to boot the door, climb up, and save yourself by your belief, your uh, <laughs> cross-dressing Calvinist. <laughs> That's not funny. That's not funny. Oh, uh, Anyway. You want to believe a lie and, that, and justify yourself? Here, I'll, I'll let you have what you want. That's what that's talking about. God himself deceives no one. Okay? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. They just come up with it out of their imagination. The tie in there, okay? Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Who, knowing the judgment of God, like the Hermetic individual, I'm not going to name him, uh, who I'm referring to, who uses a New World translation. Dude, if you even happen to see this, uh, you're using the Jehovah's Witnesses thing to try to, you're making, you're making a fool out of yourself, son. You are ma you're making a fool of yourself. So, be aware of that, okay? Alright, but, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery likes company. They want, they're not going to heaven themselves, so they want to bring you along with them to hell. That's basically what that's talking about. Okay? Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Verses 16. Where are you going? Verses 16 on to verse 19. And you got to remember Satan, Lucifer, who was in the Garden of Eden. The very first lie in all of Scripture. For God doth know that in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. For God doth know, in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as God, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God. But what did he say before that? Ye shall not shoot. That was the first line of scripture. Satan, first thing he did was, yea, hath God said, he questioned what God said. Then, you know, said to Eve, you know, she was like, well, we can't eat that fruit. Neither can we touch it. God didn't say anything about touching it. So, the Eve right there, kind of, you know, with the moment or whatever. But Satan, Satan, ye shall not shoot. And see, when you read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, the inference there is that when Eve was thinking, you know, well, we'll die if we do. She was thinking instantaneous. She was. They were. They were like, if, I'm gonna, if I eat that, I'm going to die, drop down dead. 
That wasn't the case, was it? They died, or else Adam and Eve would still be here one day. An animal had to die after they disobeyed God, okay? But they didn't die right away. They died spiritually right away, yes. But they didn't physically die right away, did they? No, uh, Adam was almost a thousand years. So Satan lied. Okay? Satan lied. And Satan wants to be God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. You saints know that by heart by now. You ought to. Okay? Satan wants to be like the Most High. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. We're going to get to that uh, portion of Scripture here in a little bit. But, Proverbs 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. These six things, the number of man, doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven, seven the day of rest, are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. A lying tongue. God loves you! Just believe and receive. You need to come to Christ's one true church. I'm elect. Okay? <laughs> or, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew because I'm a Hamite. Or I'm a Hebrew because I'm from England. Okay? <laughs> Alright? A lying tongue. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. And the imagination of every man's heart, the thought of every man's heart is only evil continually. Man's wicked imaginations, okay? All right? <clears throat> a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies. And he, melon, <gasps> yeah, who soweth that soweth discord among brethren. I couldn't help that. Excuse me. In this context, you see lies and lying twice. God hates lying. God hates liars. He does. That doesn't mean that he will not forgive a liar, but you're living a lie, you're God's enemy. You're lying about God, you're God's enemy. Now, there's a difference between ignorant, not knowing, and then willfully ignorant, being stupid, and not wanting to know. Okay, there's a big difference there. God hates liars. God is not for lying. Don't get ahead of me. Proverbs 20, uh, 12 now, verse 21. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Proverbs 21, just one verse. Proverbs 21, verse 31. Proverbs 21, verse 31. The horse, the horse, is prepared against the day of battle. But safety, safety is of the Lord. Okay? Safety is of the Lord. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Safety is of the Lord. Remember that. Psalm 32, 8 unto verse 11. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, departing from evil. We cover this, I think, in the Job video about the horse, okay? Whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, 
But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. And also Isaiah 30, I believe it is. Isaiah 30. Isaiah, or it might be 31. Yes, Isaiah 31. Excuse me. Verses 1 on to verse 3 in Isaiah 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Go to the world. And stay on horses. And trust in chariots. Because they are many. If Jesus had a church, it would be the biggest one. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. It would be the least of all. Okay? It's crazy. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses. I'm, I'm doing that purposely. Okay? And trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are strong, are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Why? Because they, like Lot, they see just what's in front of them. They don't see the forest for the trees. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now, the Egyptians are men. Those of the world are men and not God. And they're horses. They're horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is holpen shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. <laughs> Verse 21 again in Proverbs. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Absolutely. And verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But they that deal truly are his delight. Let's, let's do some gleaning here, shall we? Go to Exodus chapter 20, just one verse, part of the Ten Commandments, okay? Which no man at his best state could ever do perfectly. Only one man who just happened to be God the Father, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, okay? He was able to do it, okay? Uh, Exodus 20, we want verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. But it's okay to lie on other people, huh? No. No. God's not for lying. Okay? Leviticus. Leviticus. 19, verses 11 and 12. 19, 11 and 12. In Leviticus. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Like these guys. I swear to God it was like this. And they're lying to you. I used to know a guy who's in hell now um, who would often say that. Oh, I swear to God, dude. It's like, Dave, you have no idea of the danger you're in. And he knows better now, unfortunately, for him. Okay? All right? Uh, let's see. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Hmm. <laughs> Watch out for people who try to tell you that the falling away is messed people, our brethren getting messed up. Uh, saved people, saints, uh, will get messed up. 
The falling away are those who claim to be of us, but they were never of us. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 21. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come to be against and to replace. Atheists, you're against God and you replace him with yourself. Okay? Even now are there many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Yeah. There's a whole plethora effect. Yes, there are. Here's the falling away. They went out from us. They tried to join themselves with us. But in name and title and whatnot, they affixed themselves to us. But they were, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is the falling away. People who have for years, 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 years uh, been saying that they're saved and then something or other happens and then they depart. Okay? They depart, proving that they were never saved in the first place. That's the falling away. Watch out for these idiots who try to blur that in order to protect themselves. Watch out for guys like that. They're devils. They're not of us, brother. You, you, my dear brother, from you know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We talked about this personally, so anyway. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That is talking about the seal until the day of redemption. That is talking about, you read John chapter 3, uh, 1 John chapter 3, that is talking about the Holy Ghost, the Lord that is within you. Okay, that's not saying that you as a person, spirit, soul, and body can be sinless on earth. That is saying the one that lives in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will not guide you into sin. Okay, he won't. He won't. That's what 1 John 3 is talking about. Okay, the unction there in verse 20 is a reference on to the Lord himself, the seal until the day of redemption in the saved, born again, converted brother, sister of the church of the living God, a saint. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Okay, Verse uh, 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and no lie is of the truth. And as I said earlier, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Lies came from Satan. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Antichrist to be against and to replace pit putty antiperspirant right get rid of the odor and replaces it with aluminum siding that gives you cancer <laughs> okay all right good example okay good example but anti to be against and to replace an atheist you're against God you're replacing him with yourself Okay? And the, the, the Jesuit coadjutor. Okay? They're replacing God's grace with their own belief. They're replacing the truth with a lie. Okay? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. I will be like the Most High. Okay? He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Romans 3. Romans 3. Romans 3. Verses 1 on verse 8. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? You gotta remember, uh, watch the uh, videos, what is a Jew? Okay, we talk about what a, a Jew is scripturally. A Jew scripturally is equated onto a Hebrew, okay? All right, so when you read in scripture, there is that exception in the book of Esther. Yes, in the total, in the total sense, a Jew in scripture is a Hebraic individual. The Hebrews came out of Shem, not of Ham or Japheth, okay? What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. 
chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Were the oracles of God committed unto the Hamites? No. Were they committed unto us Shaphathites? No. Were they committed unto all of those of Shem? Like the Japanese, Chinese, the Koreans, and stuff like that. No. They were committed unto the Hebraic people that were called out of Shem. Okay? Any questions? Check out the, the videos. What is a Jew? Okay? And if you're going to search the channel, remember, you got to put in accountable KJV and then whatever. Because in your channel search, you search something and then they give you a whole myriad of other videos now. It's really annoying. But let's continue. Okay? For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Let God be true. And every man a liar. As it is written. That thou might be justified in thy sayings and might, oh, mightest overcome when thou art jar, judged. But, yea, hath God said, if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous to take take it? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the whale? For if the truth, listen to this, for if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why am I yet judged as a sinner? Because God doesn't want lies to promote truth. That's, that's no brainer. Well, if the gospel goes out by me lying about it, you're missing the point. You don't use lies to spread truth. And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just, like the sleazy believest. Okay, let us do evil that good may come. Okay, and your answer to that is Romans 6, verses 1 on to verse 4. You're saved now, okay? Shall we, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I'm just going living like I'm living, right? No. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, identified with his death, dying to self, okay? Therefore we are buried with him. Ooh, that, that was nasty. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When someone, when you guide someone up by the Romans road, by Romans 5 you're going to know what you're dealing with. Okay, What does that mean? By Romans 5 you're going to know if the Lord has used you to show someone how they need the Lord Jesus Christ through the book of Romans, by Romans 5, you're going to know if they're going to do this or they're going to be... If they're going to be pricked in the heart, what, 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 what should I do? Or are they going to be cut to the heart? Ah, shut up! I don't want to hear it! I'm right! I'm okay! You're okay! You're going to know by Romans 5. Romans 6 then, okay? Then you, you take them to Romans 10, you guide them through that, okay? But, Romans 6, you come back to this, it's like, okay, I'm saved. Now what? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Just live as I normally live? Uh, you, you got the Lord living within you. It's going to be really hard for you to do it. God's not going to force you to live the way he wants you to. But he's going to make it really difficult for you. Okay? Because you have an unction from the Holy One. Okay? All right? And like verse 4 again. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. But then along comes the sleazy believest. It's like, ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Like, like it says there in Romans 3, right? Like it says here in Romans 3. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? 
Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. <laughs> or verse 8. And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Oh, the more you sin, the more grace you get. Right? Or I don't worry about it. You shouldn't, but don't worry about it. That's called cheaping it. Okay? Uh, Romans 6. We want verses 15 and 16. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace, God forbid? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? Okay? Very simple. And for this, the atheists, they don't want the truth. Neither does a sleazy believist. Neither does a Catholic. Okay? And Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, we want verses 5 on to verse 11. Those who are saved. This is what, this is for those who are saved. Mortify, kill. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And those are all forms of idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, those who hear the truth and reject it. Not a saved saint who's messed up. Okay, you hear the truth, like that one hermetic guy I, I've referred to now a couple times. Um, he's a child of uh, he's a child of wrath. He's a child of disobedience. He's going to hell, and he's proud to tell you that. Guy's stupid. Willfully ignorant. The guy's intelligent. Okay, he is. He's stupid. He's willfully ignorant. Okay. So, if you watch that, if hey you you watching this, you're offended by me saying that. Sorry. Okay. You want to believe you're your own god? That's stupid. Okay? That's stupid. Man has a horrible rec uh, track record of being his own God, man. Come on. Come on now. Okay? For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. See, verse 7, look at the book. Verse 7 is telling you what the children of wrath and children of disobedience is by in the which ye also walked sometime. Meaning, when you were lost. Okay? You read Ephesians chapter 2. Go ahead and do that on your own time, right away. When you once were. When we were once lost sinners. Okay? So verse 7 is telling you what the wrath, uh, the wrath, uh, children of wrath and children of disobedience are. Who they are. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Lost people. Okay? Who have heard the truth. They are the children of wrath, the children of disobedience, okay? Watch out for these guys who say, we'll try to tie this in as well. Uh, you know, you're a child of disobedience, but I'm saved. Well, you're just being disobedient. You're child. That's not what it's talking about. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. Verse 8, But now ye put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, this is talking within salvation, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay? There's no getting around this. God is not for lying. Now, some of you might, well, God put a lie in, God made a, a spirit lie. Hmm. Did he? 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. I've encountered this before. <laughs> 1 
guy was using an American standard, too. It's like, dude. Okay. First Kings chapter 22, verses 20 on to verse 23. This is about uh, Ahab and whatnot. And he had all these lying prophets come and tell him all this stuff that he wanted to hear, okay? See, God himself cannot lie. We've already proved that. Okay, come on. God cannot lie. But he will allow others to do that, to lie. Okay? You want to believe a lie, he will allow you to believe a lie and send you things to carry you along in that. But he himself will not lie. God cannot lie. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 20 under verse 23. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on, this, on that manner. Pay attention to this. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. A spirit came before the Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, the Lord, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do it. Verse 23. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Now see, thou say, see? Did you not just read the context? Did you, were you reading along with me, the context? Okay. A spirit came before the Lord. I'll do it. The Lord's like, how are you going to do it? It's like, I'll, I'll lie. It's like, okay, okay, go ahead. And guess what? You'll succeed. So see, the Lord, what this is talking about, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. The Lord himself is not doing the lying, but he allowed a lying spirit to be put into these prophets. God himself did not lie. He allowed that to happen. That's what he's talking about. That's what it's talking about. Okay, this is concurrent also with Isaiah chapter 66. Okay, Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 under verse 5. Okay, verses 1 under verse 5. Isaiah 66, verses 1 under verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. <laughs> where is the house that ye build me unto me, and where is the place of my rest? God dwelleth in temples made without hands, not in a church building, okay? Stay away from them places. For all these things hath mine a hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that saveth himself by his own belief. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. King Ahab wanted to be lied to. He wanted to be lied to. He wanted to believe a lie. God's not going to lie. God cannot lie. But if you want to believe a lie, I also, verse 4, will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. God abhors lying. Okay? So, if you want to choose contrary to God and believe a lie, okay, God will give you what you want. God will not lie to you. God's not a liar. But see, again, the atheist will use a Bible, the Muslim will use a Bible, and the Bibles show God to be a liar. A liar. The authorized version of the scriptures don't. 
Hear the word of the Lord, ye that, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. Yeah, and they that kill you think they do God's service, right? Yeah. Said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Keep that in context with all these Christians. And then when we get up, it's like, oh, we missed it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Of course, get, got to touch on it. Uh, touch on this. Okay, Watch out for these lying devils who want you to believe that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12 is Paul writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. That's a smooth, slicker than slut, snot devil who cannot be directly pinned down because he's smooth. He has a bunch of little things that accumulate onto one big thing. But you cannot, there's no definitive smoking gun. Watch out for a devil like that. There are those of you who know I'm, who I'm talking about. Leave that guy alone. First, uh, no, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 12. Remember ye not that when I was, was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Yes, there's a falling away going on right now. Only he who now letteth will let. The body of Christ is hindering, letting. Okay? God is omniscient, om, omnipresent, omnipotent. Okay, he's not going anywhere. What gets we, the body of Christ, get caught up, redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. That is what's being talked about here. Okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The redemption of the purchased possession. The body of Christ, not God. Okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed. There's a falling away. The redemption of the purchased possession happens. Then that man of sin, the son of perdition, that wicked be revealed. Okay? That's how that works. All right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness and them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And if you go to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he saves you, the love of God is for you. You have the truth within you. You have the love of the truth within you. Okay? And with all the seemableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Catholics have not received the love of the truth. Uh, sleazy believers have not received the love of the truth. Mormons, Jehos, Hindus, the, the, the uh, atheists, okay? And because they want to believe in a lie, whatever it is, the smorgasbord of lies that Satan offers you. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God doesn't uh, lie to anybody. God doesn't lie to anyone. You want to believe in a lie, God will let you believe it. He'll help you along. Okay? Like he did with Pharaoh. Okay? You want to believe in a lie? <laughs> the Lord's like, okay that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here's the interesting thing. Some will go, well, there were times when people lied to God. Hmm. Let's look at that. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. First of all, Exodus chapter 1 is not under the law yet. Okay? It is still the patriarchal period. Okay? Which is a similar dispensation as to our own today. 
big differences are no eternal security and it wasn't finished yet okay but this was still Exodus chapter 1 is still the patriarchal period and the faith in the patriarchal period was in what God was going to do God said to Noah build an ark I'm bringing a flood Noah's like bingo got it did it okay element of obedience and works in that dispensation okay Abraham get out of your country away from your kindred onto a land I will shoo thee Bingo, got it. Okay? And that's where people will get confused by these devils when Paul talks about Abraham and James talks about Abraham. Okay? We, uh, well, we, we talk about that uh, in a video, which will be in the description box for you. Okay? This is still until the exodus actually happens. It's still the patriarchal period. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 1. And remember, God said what he was going to do. And in the patriarchal period, it was faith in what God was going to do. In the law, your faith was in God that he would honor you for keeping the law. Okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth. But Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 19. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of which the name of the one was Sifra and the name of the other Pua and he said why when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and, and see them upon the stools if it be a son ye shall kill him but if it be a daughter then shall then she shall live this is also a very good text to come to when people will say to you that you have to do what the law says, especially when the law is contrary to Scripture. Perfect example. God with a face covering in the book of Leviticus tells you how to properly use that of a face covering. It covers your upper lip. The Jesuits want you to put the diaper over your nose. That way you're breathing in your own CO2, killing yourself. Okay? Contrary to God. Remember, the authorized version is very scientific. Okay? All right? But that, that's just an example. Here, Pharaoh was telling the Hebrew midwives. Don't miss that. The Hebrew midwives. Like a nurse. A midwife, you know, to help with birthing and that kind of thing. Why don't you can put the, the thing in the description box for me or in the comment section if you wish. Okay? Hebrew. Okay? Before the law. Before the law even. Okay? During the dispensation of the patriarchs still. Okay? The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, was telling the Hebrew people, the Hebrew midwives, if it was a son, kill it. And when today, when you got a Jesuit-controlled government telling you to do things that is contrary to God, okay, that, this is a really good text for this. Really good text for this. You go to, just, we can go off for hours on this, but we're keeping this simple, okay? We're keeping this simple. I wanted to touch on this. So, the Lord. Acts chapter 5, verse 29, Okay? Acts chapter 5, oh, uh, let's see, um, let's see, verses 27 on to verse 29 in Acts chapter 5. And when they, the Pharisees, had brought them, uh, some of the apostles, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Back in Exodus chapter uh, chapter 1, verse 15, And the king of, the, of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sifra, 
and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, these were Hebrews already, okay, verse 15 shows that, and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. We ought to obey God rather than men. God is not for murder. God is not for killing. Yes, people, God has killed people, yes. But this, you know, liken this onto abortion, okay? All right, God was against this, okay? Even before the law, all right? All right? So, you got a Pharaoh saying to kill the sons, that way the, um, the lineage die out. Or you fear God, it's like, don't worry about that guy. Don't worry about that guy. You do what I tell you. Okay? But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Now here it is. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come to them. Now, I have gone on record in saying, well, you know, that's obviously, you know, think about this. That could be very well the truth, couldn't it? Because God does not lie, does he? Does he? And, like, you know, when you got, like, Breaker, who's always... <laughs> I don't know how any of you people could take Robert Breaker seriously. I really don't. But with him constantly trying to uh, guess when the redemption, of, or as he says, the rapture is going to happen, okay, and because they give a date, I personally believe it's like, okay, you believe that it was the 23rd? I'm purposely not going to do it, Okay. I, I kind of liken it onto this, where the where Pharaoh's like kill the kill the uh, kill the uh, male children, and the Lord's like, you watch this, buddy. Okay. I have gone on record. I have gone on record in saying that all that was not obviously true, and I I have, and I'm repenting of that in this context, because. Because you'll read it's like, well, that, that wasn't true. Does God lie? Does God lie? And also, too, about this context, you've got to also keep in mind the Hebrew midwives with the Hebrew children. Because what's, okay, logically, what happens the Holocaust? Hmm? The Holocaust. Safety is of the Lord. Hmm? You were in Germany and you had Hebrews in the basement and the Gestapo knock on your door? Hmm? Do you have Jews here? What do you do? Protecting God's people. Hmm? What do you do? See, in this context, number one, verse 19, and I repent of, you know, saying that, you know, that's not true, obviously. God doesn't lie, does he? But see, it was in protection of what? His chosen people with someone who is going contrary to what God said in the first place. God is not a liar. And you look at that context, was God the one lying anyway? Hmm? No. No. Pharaoh is doing contrary to God anyway, and in context, it's for Hebrews. Okay? Okay? Now, let's go to the other one. Joshua chapter 2. Oh, yeah. Jo uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter 2. Getting ahead of myself here. Joshua, not Samuel. Joshua chapter 2. 
this could have been far more in depth, but uh, trying to keep this as simple as possible. <laughs> um, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord. Okay, they, you can't because you're not saved. So, but Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now, this is after the giving of the law. This is under the law, which is faith and works. Okay? Faith and works. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Rahab was not a Jew. She was not a Hebrew member. Okay? She was, she, we're going to see, she protected God's people. Okay? She herself was a Gentile. She herself was not right with God, even though she had the fear of the Lord through them. Okay? And Rahab, of course, within even today, the descent of Rahab is respected and cared for by even the Hasidic today because of this. So let's continue. And it was told to King Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, Hebrews, and hid them, and said thus, There came unto me, there came, there came men unto me, but I was not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Clearly lying. Clearly lying. She was. She was a Gentile. She was not under the law. Okay? She wasn't right with God in the first place. Okay? Keep that in mind. Number two. She was protecting God's people. Okay. Okay. All right. You've heard, I've heard, and I researched this myself about people um, protecting the Jews during the Holocaust. Uh, they were Christians. They themselves weren't saved, I doubt. You can go off on that however you want to. Okay. But see, these incidences that we are seeing, what's the commonality? Before the death, burial, and resurrection. And in both incidences that we're looking at, it is to do what? The, the men, they were spies. Male spies. In Exodus chapter 1, the male children to protect the Hebrews. Did God himself do this? No, he did not. No, he did not. Remember, God's not forcing you to do, Satan is not forcing you to do, okay? So, to go to this, to say, well, saints lie. Uh, wait a minute, pal, wait. No, no, no. Let's continue. And she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of, to Jordan unto the fords, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Okay? So, the commonality is here for the protection of God's people. That's the, that's the one thing. God is not for lying. Okay? But in an incident like this, did God, was God the one who did the lying? No. Was it, and Rahab here, was she under the law? Was she saved as it were? And that's a totally different thing to, but I'm just for the sake of this. Was she? No. 
Okay? She was a Gentile protecting the people of God under the law, which is what? Faith and works. Okay? Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Okay? Psalm 102. God is not a liar. God is not for lies. Okay? He is not. He is not. In the incidences, in Exodus 1 and in Joshua 2, God was not responsible for that. And, but the common thread was Psalm 102, verses 12 on to verse 18. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, were lively stones, and favor the dust thereof. Ashes to ashes, dust thou art. From dust thou art come, unto dust thou shalt return. Okay? This, Psalm 102, is referring on to the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe. Yes, you can tie in the Holocaust into that, yes. It's more appropriate for the future during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? About people in a dispensation which would be faith and works, similar to under the law, will be doing things in order to protect some of the Jewish Hebraic people. Okay? So, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings the earth of the earth thy glory. Kind of like what Rahab did. In a time, time of Jacob's trouble, where only 144,000 Jews have eternal security. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. And also, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Okay? And then we'll be done. Then we'll be done. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the Lord has said, had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. That's the patriarchal period. Their faith is what God was going to do. Today in this dispensation, our faith is in what? It is finished. Okay? And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And these shall all families of the earth be blessed. See, Rahab, she feared the name of the Lord. She was a Gentile. She was not right with God. Okay? She wasn't. But she feared the name of the Lord. Okay? And she clearly lied. And she was doing so to protect the sons of Israel. Okay? Okay? All right? Because the Jew is the apple of God's eye. Okay? And we also see with Pharaoh kill all the men children contrary to God's word in the first place. And think of this. That man of sin, the son of perdition, after he goes into the third rebuilt temple claiming, I am, having the visage of Jesus, he's going to turn the entire world against the Jew, against the apple of God's eye, going contrary to his word again. Do you understand? Do you get it? Do you get it? It's going to be a repeat of what we see in Exodus. You're going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition, saying, kill all the Hebrews. When we have promises, uh, cursed are those who curse thee, going against what God said, because he's going to be... Do you get this? I know you saints get this. Okay? So, God is not for lying. God is not for lying. Okay? And he is not the author of lies. Satan is. And the examples in Exodus 1 and Joshua 2, okay, number one, Exodus 1 is before the law, okay, and it was Hebrews, protecting Hebrews, when Pharaoh said, kill the Hebrew males, contrary to Scripture. 
Joshua chapter 2. Rahab was not a Hebrew Jew. Okay? She wasn't even right with God. But she was protecting the children of Israel. Okay? All right? And during the Holocaust, we doubt. I don't know if those people were saved who, who saved the, the Jews. Okay? We don't know. They talk about Corrie ten Boom. That woman was crazy. That woman was crazy. There's no way I believe at all that Corrie ten Boom was a saved woman. I don't believe that for one second. I don't. Okay? If you're offended by that, I'm sorry. Okay? Take offense in the gate. All right? But remember... During the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, the same principle as in Exodus chapter 1 is going to be there. Okay? And you ought to obey God. That is going to be it for this video. This has uh, done, been done later than I had wanted. Um, but, because uh, I had a horrific evening last night. Health-wise, had a really, really bad. Also, carrying on to this morning, I, I actually didn't get to sleep until 8 in the morning or something like that, or 7 or something like that, somewhere in there, and then woke up at 10.30. So I, I had a really bad <laughs> night health-wise last night. So, But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Hopefully, this will help some of you. Uh, thank you, brother. That was, that was a good question. Thank you for watching this. I love you. Thank you for your prayers. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.